zero turn to me they're pretty much all the same we got to get it to turn over we got to get it to fire off we got to get it to run on its own so we're going to cover some starting how to get your mower to start actually turn over we're going to make sure it'll fire off if it'll fire off if it won't i'll show you why and how to diagnose that whether you got a bad coil or just a spark plug whether there's a, a fuel issue in your fuel line your fuel pump carburetor the list goes on. I can keep you here for a week if I wanted to explaining all this stuff to you, but I'm going to show you some quick tips and tricks that I use every day to fix all of these machines. Y'all stick around. Look this up right there. That right there turns. That right there safety. That turns on the blades. That activates the starter. That thing right there goes wing, and then it goes wooden, 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 and go cut grass. Thank you. Okay, folks, let's start out with battery. Cheap voltmeter. You can get them about anywhere. Go to the volt section on there volts oop the glare goodness 12.66 volts so we know this battery is good or you can use something as simple as a test light now it's not going to show you the voltage obviously and it will light this bulb with less than 12 volts so another thing once you know you got a good battery make sure that these terminals are clean and tight if you got them little plastic wing nuts take them off throw them in the trash can get some real bolts and put in the doggone thing they cost pennies go pick you up some the next thing we're going to talk about we're going to skip that switch we're going to skip that safety switch that pto switch but we'll come back to them you know you got good voltages the quickest way to find out all it is this terminal or this terminal let's say this one goes to the positive on the battery this one goes to the starter same thing on this solenoid so take your screwdriver and it will spark folks jump with your screwdriver across here that'll send power directly to your starter motor and it should spin if the if it if you hear it engage and it spins great if it doesn't next thing i want you to go do if you hear it clicking and trying to sounds like the engine's locked up go pull the spark plug out try it again then the other thing you could do is take put your hand on the flywheel and turn it sometimes that starter gear will be stuck out in the flywheel okay but do those couple things and let's get this engine to turn over the next thing we'll cover is these three items i'm going to put a link in the description about key switches very important don't just go replace it you have to get there's little letters i don't know if i'm going to get you to focus in see right there by my dirty fingernail there's a B for battery. It's real simple. This one up here, I think that's an L. I'm looking through the camera. L for lights. Okay, M for magneto. That's what kills the coil. And they're, they're real simple. But I'll put a link in the video uh, down in the description about how to test those. Safety switches, they're real simple. With the switch out like it is, not pushed in, that's either open or you mash it in, then it closes. Or the opposite way. It could be closed right now or open. A lot of times, this one and this one will be the exact opposite of this one and this one. There, I'll show you how to test those in one second. I'll also put a link in the video about a PTO switch. Normally with the switch in, I believe, and I may be telling you wrong, but I'll put a link in the description about this one. Uh, and you have to look at the code on the side, but basically with the switch in, you connect the outer terminal, this outer terminal to this outer terminal, this one to this one. When you pop that button out, like you engage your blade, you'll connect this terminal to this terminal, the outer to the middle or the outer to the middle. It'll be the, um, the one that's, uh, NC, I think, um, Anyhow, test it. You'll see. And that'll tell you that your switch is working. With the switch out, you don't have one in the middle. It'll just open the connection. These will not be connected together. Okay, let's talk about this safety switch. Turn your, find your little horseshoe on there. Okay. And what you'll do, I'm going to show you how these safety switches work. 
clip a terminal and clip a terminal. All right, you see I have OL, which is no connection. Now I'm gonna mash the button in and I've got continuity there. Button out, OL. Let's go do the other side now. This terminal, if I can get my little clampy doohickeys on there, you know what a doohickey hitchy mo thing of a bob is? Now you see that one has continuity with the switch out. Now it should go to OL when I push the button in. We know that switch is good. They're all pretty much the same. Just remember, flat to flat is all you've got to worry about. Flat to flat. This one and this one together, and that one and that one together. Simple. Now I'm going to show you another way to get your mower to turn over fast. Golly, I bet Derek over at Vice Grip Garage don't have to deal with safety switches and PTOs. He does have to deal with starter solenoids and starters though. First, I'm gonna to touch on these solenoids. You got a four post and a three post. I will put a link in the description. I may pop one up on the top of the screen for this too. And I'll explain in a video how these work. They're real simple. That's your trigger wire. When you put power here and the frame is grounded, it'll connect that terminal, that terminal. Therefore, your machine will start. This one, either either way, it does not matter how you hook these up. That can be ground, and that can be for when you hit the key switch. Get the camera on what you're pointing at, T-Bone. All right, or you can have ground here, and then power shoots there. That connects this to this to your starter. Real simple. Okay. My fancy jumper box is just an old lawnmower battery with some clamps on it. That's what I use. You may have one of those nice fancy jumper boxes. I don't know. This is what I use. I'll take my positive and I'll go right on ahead and hook it right down here on this starter terminal, making sure that nothing, you know, nothing on my clamp is touching. The reason I hook this on, you can hook your ground up to the ground on the battery. That's fine. But when you go to do what I'm fixing to do, what it will do is you'll be sparking on here if you just touch the positive. Yes, it will work. I just don't like to put the arc marks on here and mess up your threads and your bolts and stuff. I like to keep things pretty. So you take that. And what I did also, I went ahead and pull out the porcelain spark making it happen, or, you know, your spark plug. And then I'm going to take and just go right over here, get my ground. And we're going to touch this to ground and we're going to test our starter. See? Spins over. Y'all can hear that, I know. So I already know the safeties and everything work on this machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the key. Park brake is on, so I don't even have to be in the seat, okay? I do have our spark plug out. Let's see if it's got fire while it's sitting here. Well, if I could turn the doggone key, it's tangling up. See the spark? Okay. Now, what I do a lot of times before I even pull the spark plug out, I'll have my jumper box hooked up. I use some brake parts cleaner carb spray. You can take a cap full of gas and right into the throat of the carburetor, I'll spray some, okay? And all I'm doing is go put a little gas in there. What I'm looking for is to hear this engine pop off. If I hear it pop off, I don't even have to pull the spark plug out. I know I've got fire and I know I've got enough compression for the machine should run. So let's give her a shot. I'm looking in the camera and not at what I'm doing, y'all. Hold on, here we go. So there, we know it runs, okay? So the next thing we want to do, and the reason I've already diagnosed this machine though, uh, but the reason I've got that clamped off is because uh, I've got to clean the fuel system and all this, but we'll take you through that in just a minute too. Well, you say, T-Bone, I pulled my spark plug out and gas ran everywhere. Well, go ahead and pull that dipstick out. Hopefully you check the oil to start with. I should have mentioned that, but I didn't. Check the oil, pull the dipstick out, smell it. Do you smell gas? Is it over full? If it ran out of the spark plug hole, yes, it's over full. Okay, now what's gonna cause that is either gonna be carburetor issue, or if it's a gravity feed system, it is the carburetor. If it has a fuel pump, that is also a possibility. Here's a fuel pump on one. 
here's the fuel pump on this one. Now what you're looking for on here is the pulse line. In this case, that hose runs around to your oil dipstick tube. That's where it gets its pulse. Other machines are different. Some of them get them uh, the vacuum pulse off of the valve cover. I'll show you one. Sorry about the glare, folks. It's bright out here. This pulse line right here. Pull it off. See, is there gas running out of this fuel pump? Same case on the other motor we're working on inside. Pull that off. If you smell gas dripping out of there, you've got a bad diaphragm in your fuel pump. Replace it. The other thing when you do this, now obviously you need to change your oil and change your oil filter. It'll be fine, folks. People say, well, how, how do you get all the gas out? How do you get? It'll run out, trust me. Drain the oil, it'll come out. It'll all run out. You'll actually have a cleaner crankcase that way, believe it or not. But anyhow, onward. So let's talk about your carburetors. You're going to look up the part number and you're going to find maybe it's got a Nikki 6 on there. We all love those. Those are, throw it into trash. Um, you can go on, if you don't want to order an OEM Briggs, you can get you a Chinese one for 20 bucks. It'll come with fuel line and clamps and blah, 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 blah. Again, you get what you pay for. It's kind of iffy sometimes if they're going to leak or not. Believe it or not, the part number for this machine can be this Nikki carburetor, which is just like the other one, or you can order the same part number on OEM. I know the part number's upside down. It does not matter. And you're going to get OEM is going to be a Walbro style, and which in my opinion is a way better carburetor than fooling with this silly thing. So anyhow, I'll... I, I, I like to go with OEM, but sometimes the customer says, no, I want the $20 aftermarket. So that's what I do. Customer's always right, right? Not always, but got to do what they tell them. Tell me that's their machine. Another very critical part you can check is the solenoid on the bottom of the carburetor. Is it working? You can use a test light and see if it's getting power. You can turn your key on and off and hear it go clickety, clickety, clackety, clack. And you don't get a clickety, clack. Get a half inch wrench and let's pull it out and take a look and see what's going on. And this one is a talk gone that's on there. A half inch. I didn't realize I stuck it back on there that tight. I've already had this one out, folks. So, anyhow. Oh, goodness. There goes the gas. And see, this one is stuck in. Oh, now it's starting to come back out. See, it should come out. Now, something else bad about these, you, with these with the rubber tip on here, that engine gets hot, and you go out there riding around, and say you ride five, ten minutes, and the thing shuts off. What's happening, this little rubber cap will come off, and when it comes off, it will stab up in there to your main jet and shut your doggone fuel off. You cut the machine off, or cut your key off, this releases, this will get real soft on some of them. This one's hard as a concrete block but anyhow it'll come up there and stop and then it'll be real soft or messed up from fuel and that plunger actually go back in it and it's a little hard to find sometimes so you just want to find out if it's loose or not now we already know that this carburetor is just uh it's terrible so anyhow we're going to put a new carburetor on this machine for this man uh i, I don't have time to rebuild these nickies yes they can be rebuilt have at it if that's what you want to do there's a hundred videos out there on them Let's say your machine has one of these glorious things. They come in a couple of colors, red and white. One is for gravity feed, one's for fuel pump. You mean to show you the best thing to do with one of these? And I save one of these just to show customers. They've just got a little screen in there. Yes, they're gonna let trash into your carburetor. I don't care, throw the darn thing in the trash can and get a real fuel filter. Did you hear that fall? This is a fuel filter actually for a Kawasaki. Plenty of flow for gravity feed or a fuel pump. Here is the rotary part number. I buy them in packs of five, 10352. That is the number you need. It'll work on anything you can get it to fit on. I promise you it'll be fine. That other mess is junk. Okay, a little, another little note about these carburetors when you go to put these on. If you look on this choke lever, see that little tab sticking up right there? Even this OEM one has one. Take your razor knife or cutting pliers and cut that little tab sticking off the top. The reason you want to cut that off 
is because it will hang up on the bottom of this engine cover and cause your choke not to work. So just cut it off. You're not, just that little tab sticking up right there. Snip it off of there and you won't have anything to worry about. All right, a couple more checks we do. Pull your gas cap off and you're gonna love this. See all that black around the threads? Notice that gasket is no gasket. Well, that's because it's all down. Sell the pieces of it down in the fuel tank. And what you want to do is just suck all that old gas out of that tank. Clean all this mess out. I use my air-operated oil extractor to get in there and actually vacuum the bottom of that fuel tank. Now, sometimes you can just take the whole fuel tank off, flip it over, and rinse it out really good and let it dry out in the sun. The way to check this fuel pump also, another one, jumping around a little bit folks sorry about that you'll take and pull your fuel line off of your carburetor crank your engine over and you should see the fuel start pumping out of that carburetor now obviously this isn't one of those little pancake filters but if i'm putting the carburetor on it's getting a new fuel filter now if you're not getting fuel out of here what you'll do is you can pull the other line that goes to the fuel tank pull it off and blow on it, you should hear the gurgling in the fuel tank as it's blowing through. Now, and, and you can also in turn take your air hose, cup your hand around it, blow through there, it should push fuel through. That'll kind of check your hoses for you. But if you're getting not getting fuel pumped through here, you've either got, it's not getting vacuum or a pulse, or that fuel pump is bad. Gravity flow, you don't have to worry about that, right? Okay, so four bolts. You'll notice the difference in the shoulders. So this one's got a skinny shoulder and that one's got a long shoulder. These two skinny shoulders come out of the front and the two long ones come out from right here and over here. Pull those four bolts out, throw them on the floor, throw them across the shop. This fuel pump snaps in right here. All you do is take a screwdriver, stick in there behind it, twist and it goes snap twist snap be sure to do it close because you don't want to break those tabs then wiggle this cover and it'll pop right off and voila while you're in here you're going to want to look at these fins make sure all these fins are clean so i'm going to show you how to pull this carburetor off real easy this is your crankcase breather i see that's already off and broken so seven sixteenths Go right in here. Now some people do this a little different. I do this the way I do it. So some people like to pull them off up here at the intake. I don't. Because I got to take this apart anyway. So why not just leave the intake on. That was 7 sixteenths. This is 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. If I can get it to bend around this gas tank. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm going to make it work, y'all. Hold on. That one wasn't even tight. Oh, looky here. Let me show you what else is going on I just noticed before I take this off. Look, someone has tried to hook this choke up under here. That is completely wrong. Completely wrong. This should actually be like this. Now they've obviously, I think something's broken there. I'll show you how it goes back together though. Hold on. Take this off and this off. And what you'll normally do to get that choke rod out, it'll be sitting in there like this. I'll back the carburetor up, turn the carburetor and it'll slide out because it slides. Can y'all see right down here in this groove? That is where that choke lever goes with the hook up. I'll show you, see right there the hook up. That's how that goes. So this, you just spin it around, do a little wiggle push, there's your rod, and then your spring. Simple, folks. All right, y'all stand by a second and let me get ready for this uh, next little uh, install here. All right, remember I tell you about this little tab right here that hits on your air cleaner, take my cutters, whack it off right there. This rod, what was broken on that other carburetor is right there. This edge is broken. It goes in the outside hole, like so. But what I like to do first, 
I'll close the throttle. I'll hook my spring in the little hole. The throttle rod will go in there. The next thing I'll do is I'll hook this right in here, lay it down flat, I'll aim it up in here, and then we'll flip it around. Then you can mount it right back up. So y'all stand by a second and let me get this gasket cleaned off. I forgot to do it. I'm too busy filming, huh? Okay, so all we're going to do, stick our screws back in, get those through, pop the gasket on, maybe, something like that, start them up there, and then buzz them, buzz them. Okay, we're going to stop right here and I'm going to talk about this coil. When you go to do the spray in the carburetor cleaner in through the throat of the carburetor, it does not pop off and start. Pull the spark plug out, lay it up here like I showed you. If you do not have spark, try another spark plug. Do not put a daggum auto light or Bosch or fast fire. Go get a real spark plug. NGK. BKR4E is what most of these take. Uh, pop one of those up there, see if you got spark. If you don't have spark, you're going to want to look right over here. And y'all stand by, let's see if we can show it. See that one wire? Take this one wire and unplug it. That is your kill wire. Now, with that wire unplugged, you can do this with the engine cover off, spin the engine over. Then, if you have spark, you know there's a problem. This wire is grounded somewhere or a safety switch could be bad. There's a list of issues that could be causing that. But if you pull this wire off and you do not have spark, replace the coil. That's how you diagnose the coil, pure and simple. You don't need an ohm meter. I never, ever, ever test one with an ohm meter. So y'all stand by, I'm gonna tighten this up and I'll be right back with you. Well, folks, this contraption is my homemade oil extractor. It's an old AC vacuum pump I've had since the 80s, and I rigged this thing up with a few cheap parts from PVC pipe from Lowe's. Of course, it's got one of those fancy, dancy stickers on them, but if you want to make one yourself, these things are like over $100, I believe. Now, you can get the manual ones. I wanted one I could hook up to my air hose. You can go onto that jungle website and you know that that amazon place i ordered one just to have another one i'm gonna make another one though and get the almost you know it'll do the same job and make one yourself i'll put a link to this uh down in the description where you can watch the video you ought to see the fails i had trying to do it with buckets and stuff that didn't work too well it's funny y'all go check that video out so one more for you if it will not turn over let's say you turn the key and it goes to a certain point and stops and then you can see the flywheel move and it just stops right there. You know you've got a good battery. What you're going to want to do is pull this valve cover off and adjust your valves. I'll put a link to that. I'm going to try to put it up there. At the very least, it's going to be down in the description. And you can watch that video to show you how to adjust the valves. It'll also show you how to look for that bump for the compression release. That may be your problem. Make sure you have that bump and your compression release is working. If not, it's got a bad camshaft with a broken compression release. I have a video on that. So once you've got everything sucked out of this fuel tank and good and clean, you're going to want to put some fresh gas in there. Uh, obviously, we're going to need a gasket for that fuel cap or replace the fuel cap. Then you're going to want to put your fresh gas in. Take your fuel filter off, crank the engine over, have you a little container. Now, we're, I'm going to move my little container, obviously. That's where I was draining part of the tank. But you're going to want to go from the line before the fuel filter. Take that off and crank the engine over and let it pump that fresh gas and get fresh gas. Because you don't want old gas in the fuel pump and fuel lines going into your brand new carburetor you just spent all that money on because you're going to be taking that doggone thing apart if you don't clean it out first. So get this fuel line, fuel system cleaned out before you start this engine. All right, folks, got her back together. I haven't started up yet. It's hot outside and I don't want to lose my air conditioning. So 
Stick around, let me push it outside and we're gonna crank this thing up. I'll see y'all outside. This might take a minute because it's got to pump some fuel up into this fuel filter. So bear with me. Let's see what will happen. We appreciate you tuning into our YouTube channel. Click that subscribe, ring the bell, check out some of our other videos. We'll see you folks next time. Thank you very much. I'm gonna go try it out, see if it'll cut some grass. second ago do you know what it did when i was showing you guys about the coil how to test the coil pull the wire off if you have no fire it's a bad coil well i never did plug the doggone thing back up so i gotta take all this back apart so anyhow thanks for watching folks we'll see you next time